Hello there, the Network Berg, hope you're doing well. In this video, we'll be covering a little bit of Mikrotik scripting. Now, this is kind of going to be a two-parter because I'm going to build up off of this on another video where we're going to use some orchestration software outside of just normal Mikrotik scripting, namely Unimus, to do some pretty awesome things. But this video is just to get you started off on a basic idea of what scripting is, what we can do with it, and how we can implement some scripts in our network. So let's get into the video. So scripting, that, that's a big word. I know a lot of people maybe get put off when they hear about scripting. And I don't want it to be something that scares you. I actually want you to find it interesting and maybe build up it yourself. Because I am a Mikrotik novice when it comes to scripting. I'm busy learning it and I'm just trying to show you guys what I've learned so far. But scripting is great. It's amazing. It allows us as administrators a way to automate certain functions on the network if we want to. So you know that buzzword that's been going around, network automation. Mikrotik allows you to do that. And what a lot of people aren't aware, their Mikrotik devices has its own scripting language. Mikrotik has a scripting language. Let me repeat that. Mikrotik allows you to run scripts using its language, and it's very basic. It's not like this complex um, computer language that you need to learn, but it gives you a way to set up your own functions and features on your router. Your router, you can do so many different things. I've watched videos on YouTube where people were setting up stuff like geolocation to find out where a Wi-Fi is by triangulating certain things with different types of uh, access points in the area with their MAC address. It's crazy stuff that you can do with scripting. And it's amazing. And you don't need to like become a big program or anything, but I'm just pointing out that you can build whatever you need on Mikrotik using scripts. So if there's some type of function that Mikrotik maybe doesn't have, if you fiddle around with the scripting enough, I can almost guarantee you can make it work yourself. And that's what Mikrotik has always been about, always been a great product. So that is a base of what scripting is, what Mikrotik offers us with scripting. So I just quickly want to show you some places that you can get more information for the scripts so that you can read up about it yourself and also just further your own knowledge. So places that I've been visiting quite frequently, firstly, the forums, the forums for Mikrotik, Go to forum.mikrotik.com, scroll down a bit, there's a scripting section. It's crazy, I know. So in the scripting section, there's actually a lot of uh, posts that's been made, that's been updated, that has a lot of useful information. And don't be shy, if you have a question about scripting, these guys don't bite. You can definitely post here and maybe somebody that knows the answer can come and help you. Another great place that I've been gathering some knowledge is of course the TOC. Um, not so much on the new um, help, like uh, page from Mikrotik, but the original TOC, the wiki, that definitely has a lot of good information currently on scripting. Because if you go to the TOC and you just scroll down, or you can just control F and find scripting. So we can search script. And there you see I've already highlighted this. I've already opened tabs to it. And there you can open up a page to the scripting, scripting examples and tips and tricks. So this will definitely get you started on the road of Mikrotik scripting. How the structure is set up, how you can set global and local variables, how scripts actually work, um, in what function they work and what type of things you can do with the script. So this is just a base of how scripting works. Then we get some cool examples, which I enjoy because this is stuff that you can also test on your router to see um, actually what the script does when you type it in and then the scripting tricks has more or less some additional code um, that people's already defined that's been added here to quickly just uh, set up stuff with the scripting and I want to point out I've used the custom script before I didn't set it up I've even made the point Nathan one I think the guy's name was a few years ago I made a video on Mikrotik HA which was done using a script and that is so cool so here we go. This is just for the scripting. So the TOC and the forums definitely recommend. And then there's obviously a few Mikrotik videos on YouTube itself for some of the past mums that you can go and have a look at. Some of them are a little bit lengthy, but definitely good places to also learn a little bit more about scripting. I'm going to go onto my Eve topology and then I've got a little Mikrotik CHR here and we're just going to do some cool stuff with scripting. Um, so let me log in with Winbox first. 
All right, so we're on Winbox. So I'm going to connect to my MAC address. Um, admin blank, that's right. But I first just want to bring up places that you can do scripting. So obviously a lot of it you can do on a terminal. And it's actually funny, these commands that you usually line like IP address, add address, and then you add an address of whatever uh, to an interface. That is technically a script that you're running, like also this from the Microtech to tell it what you want it to do, but we do this in real time as administrators. So we don't really see this this much as scripting, um, but what you could also see is you could actually type in more complex scripts from the command line, from the terminal, and it could also run it. Like you could define stuff like a local variable and you could set it like X, or you could set a global variable and set it whatever you want it to be. Um, the difference is just being the local variables only be going to be readable in this context for the script that you're running, whereas the global variable you can obviously pull from different scripts that you're running as well. All right, but again, I don't want to confuse you with all of this programming mumbo jumbo. I just want to show you what you can achieve with scripting. All right, other places that we can definitely play around with scripting, and I've made a video about email monitoring and NetWatch before, but definitely stuff like your interface monitoring tools like NetWatch can definitely automate some stuff with scripting. Um, there's also your bandwidth type of events. So let's call it the different type of events that you get is stuff like trigger. Trigger events can definitely run scripts for you as well. And what I'd say a trigger is, is either uh, certain bandwidth thresholds are reached or a host is either up or down. And then in the event of a trigger occurring, then a script will run. So that is basically, think of it like a, a, a trap, like a speed trap. So as soon as something goes a certain threshold or something happens, then your script will be set off and then you can basically run it. And with NetWatch, it's pretty simple. You, you say which host you want to ping an example. So I want to ping my LAN IP of some server. And I can say, if the server is up, what do I want to run? This is scripting. I can tell it what it does when the server is up. And if the server is down, what should it do? Because if it's down, maybe I wanted to send an email out to me to let me know that, hey, this host is down or uh, something has happened. And I'll post a link in the description for uh, the HA video as well as the email and NetWatch thing that I created so that you can also just see a little bit like how we can set up these trigger uh, type of scripts. Besides the trigger scripts, we've also got the system schedule, but I want to show you if we go to the system scripts. In the system scripts, we can officially like add scripts. So we can give the script, we can create a script, give it a name, type what the script does. But just adding a script here doesn't do anything. It's, it's just here. You, you can um, save it here and then you can click on run script and then the script will run once. But we can set up something like a scheduler. So in the system scheduler, we can actually tell the router on specific days or specific times or specific periods um, what to run. So you can then on this uh, schedule, you can set what script it should run. So every Monday, maybe you want the router to send a backup to an FTP server. You can do it this way. And this is actually fantastic uh, to set up some basic forms of automation on Microtik. And this is all done on the Microtik directly. All right. So now that we've actually covered where we can set up scripts, let's actually set up a very cool script. I want you to think of if I've got these interfaces on this router board, and if I wanted to add, let's say a thousand VLANs, how long would that take if I had to come to the interfaces, uh, click on the VLAN, and then I can type here VLAN 100, give it the VLAN ID 100, say which interface it's on. So let's say ether four or five in this example, and I apply that. So if I wanted to do this quickly, maybe I can do a copy and just rename it like VLAN 200 and type 200. But this is actually quite slow at the moment. As we can see here, I'm actually typing at a very, <laughs> I'm typing quickly, but I'm, I've just added three VLANs, maybe in a minute but I'm going to show you the power of scripting where I'm going to add a thousand VLANs in maybe in a minute. So let's go into our terminal. And then what I'd like to do is I would firstly like to define a local variable by doing the colon, typing local, giving it the designation of X. So X we can now define in our script afterwards. So now that I've done that, I'm going to type the colons again. I'm going to say four 
x so 4x specifically from and now i can specify which vlan so i'm going to create a thousand vlans and let's say maybe i want to start from uh let's say from vlan 100 to let's make it 1100 the, that's the range of vlans i'm going to add we're going to do a do and do is just the script telling or saying what it's going to do and then we need to make these uh, two brackets and I need to make the equal sign with the do as well so do equals and then the two brackets and then whatever you put in the brackets is actually the script what's what's going to occur what's going to happen so what I want to do and this is going to be like me adding normal VLANs I'm just going to type interface VLAN add very basic and you can even tab in here that's awesome so interface VLAN add name Let's give the VLANs names. So I'm going to make it VLAN underscore, and then I'm going to make a dollar sign. And the dollar sign defines actually that it is a variable. And then I can say what the variable is. So in this case, it should be X. Uh, let me also just make these two quote marks because, sorry, I, I needed to define that because I did have the VLAN underscore here as well. So if you, if it's just the variable then you'll just type dollar sign x but since i've added an additional string here i need to make the quotation marks to actually define this properly you'll see now what i'll do is i'll type vlan id and this will just be dollar sign x and we need to just specify which interface so let's decide which interface we want to apply all of these vlans on i'm going to go with ether 4 so let me type ether 4 and then what i'd like you to see is i'm going to navigate back to the interfaces and I want you to keep a look at my items and Ether4 when I hit enter. This is going to be crazy because remember, if I had to define all of these VLANs one by one myself manually, it would have taken quite a while. If I'm doing it with the script method, look at this. I hit enter, look at the items go up. I've already added almost uh, 200, <laughs> 300. I mean, this is crazy. This is how quick the Microtech is adding these VLANs for us. In less than a minute, I might add, we're adding a thousand VLANs on this device and they each have the right VLAN ID. They've got a unique name and they specified on interface. And this is just a very brief or quick overview of the computing power on your Microtech because it can so quickly do this monotonous this thing that you don't want to do but it can do it so quickly and so effectively and we don't need to stop with the vlans you could definitely add more stuff for your scripts maybe you want to give uh, ips to each vlan you could achieve that with scripting maybe you want to put these interfaces in a vrf again you can do that with scripting so there's so much that you can achieve with scripting i just wanted to give you a little taste of the power of scripting and show you how quickly we can do bulk configurations so what I'm going to do is in the next video, we're actually going to use what we call an orchestrator, which you can think of as a central point where you're going to be running scripts off of. And this orchestrator that I've chosen to use is going to be Unimus. It's a fantastic orchestrator um, and it's got a bunch of stuff. I'll show you on that video specifically. But for now, I think I've given you at least a place that you can start your scripting journey and you've seen what you can achieve with it. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching the video. I'd like to really thank the people that support me on Patreon as well as the YouTube channel members. You guys are helping this channel grow. Uh, it's because of you guys that I can keep trying to make content and I'm really pushing to um, make YouTube more of a, a viable thing that I, I can do more full time because I really enjoy uh, making these type of videos. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.